Welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Grandma. It's Kim and my co-host. Grandma Gail. I feel like my voice is going to be a little hoarse for this. I'm still getting over a cold. All right. Well, it, it's a good voice, so don't, don't, uh, the listeners will like to hear it. Yeah. It was a lot going out, like being out in the Hamptons and all of that and going to different bars out here like you stand online for two hours at steven's talk house just to be in there in a sweaty bar for an hour and get a cold you know well not only a cold the rain was coming down so you're lucky you didn't catch pneumonia so grandma you play cards all the time with your friends yes i do which which games for those who don't know? every game i play bridge i play canasta i play mahjong kimmy the only thing i can say about our canasta game that has really put everybody over the top is we have a local little gentleman that's running a health food store and he has these little uh, products that only he sells. So I love, he has cardamom buns that are like absolutely the most delicious thing and everybody loves them in our game. And he's got a rule. His rule is you're only allowed one cardamom bun a person. I don't. He's like a soup Nazi of cardamom buns. Yeah, what if you want to buy like a few for No, your he family? asks you who's eating the other buns. So this really He makes, asks you? Yes, that's he, not his business. That's right. He says, no, you only need one. So when I was thinking about this and applying this to a date, there are rules in dating, just like in cardamom buns, you only should go with one at a time and try to enjoy. But when you only got one at a time, it made you want more than one. No, but you can't have it because that's the rule. The rule is one at a time and enjoy that one that you're having. So in many ways, I think that maybe is a rule of life. You have to enjoy each thing that you're experiencing while you're experiencing that. And then if, if it doesn't work and you're finished with it, then you move on to the next one. Which is why we're bringing in on this episode the author of a book called The Rules from 1995. Things have changed since then too. Oh yeah, I think it's, well, I think the world has changed. So, Mm -hmm. but I think some of the basic rules according to Sherry's book Mm -hmm. still apply. So I think we should talk to her about it and hear what she has to say. Okay guys, we are joined by Sherry Schneider and her daughter, Rebecca. She is the co-author of the best-selling book, The Rules, Time-Tested Secrets for Capturing the Heart of Mr. Right. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. So happy to be here. So I have a million questions. I read the book this week for the first time. Of course, I had heard of it and I've known some people who have referred to it before, but this is the first time that I actually got to read it. And I'm excited to share with our listeners some of these findings because I think that I want to be a rules girl and take a lot of it on. Um, But I want to know, first of all, you have the first book was written in 1995. Since then, you've had multiple books after that the rules to the rules for marriage the rules for online dating all the rules and not your mother's rules which is very impressive but how did the original book come to be um the original book came to be i lived in the city ellen lived in the city this is back in the 90s and we noticed that friends and just acquaintances everybody was getting very career oriented they were you know becoming lawyers and doctors and mbas and they felt we felt that we could chase men the way we chase careers because the books at the time said you can do anything you want. There are no rules. You can ask a man out. You can travel to him. You can sleep with him. You can move in. Just nothing, you know, whatever you want. Not the no rules. Nothing, nothing was out of your, you know, realm of doing. And the results were disasters. I mean, we saw friends go on vacation with guys and do all these things and they wouldn't get the commitment. They got dumped. So we said, you know what, this isn't working. We're going to tell women how it really is. And how it really is, is that men are different from women. We're biologically different. Men love a challenge. Women love a challenge too, but not the way men love it. You know, we really want security. Like we're, you know, drawing, I was drawing wedding dresses when I was seven. My brothers were like hitting baseballs and, you know, like whatever. It's like, we're different. Mm-hmm. And we had to accept that we're different because, you know, I would love to just go up to a guy and say, you know, you know, do you want to go out? It's like, I, I can't do that without getting hurt. 
And you can do Jerry, anything you're you want, so but... on. <laughs> you're so on. I hope these young girls listen to you. Keep going. <laughs> so that's how it started. And we just wrote it like a Bible, you know, don't speak to a man first, because that's where it starts with who speaks to who first. Like saying even, you look familiar. Did you go to Maryland or whatever? Like that's talking to a man first. Now there are dating coaches and books that say, you know, compliment a guy, tell him you like his tie, but that's speaking to a man first. So it's all wrong. It's, I mean, you could do it, but it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for me in this day and age. And I want to hear from Rebecca, if she feels the same of being like, well, I know plenty of relationships where, you know, girls matched with a guy first on an app or DM them on Instagram or went up to them at a bar. Um, I guess I'm still young to see if that'll turn into marriage or not, but I've seen it be successful. And I would think that like, it's not a huge no, no, Rebecca, you followed the rules. Is there like one rule that you think is like the most important or one that like you would never follow? That's just kind of like, not a question. One that's still super relevant that my mom and I talk about a lot is the, you know, asking for plans in advance, which seems like it should be a given, but like a lot of girls will just accept a date like the day before the day of. And it's like, even if you don't have plans, like, why are you doing that? Where you just are telling the guy I'm available, like whenever you want. And it sets a precedent of like, you can ask me out last minute all the time and I'll just do it. Um, so she, like in her book, it's, you have to ask Wednesday for Saturday. Well, I guess also we're at an age, like you're 24. Yeah. Okay. And I'm 25. And I feel like, you know, I have some friends who are dating for marriage, but some that really aren't, but Sherry, wouldn't you say the rules really are for women who want to have their relationship turn into marriage? Not necessarily. I mean, we do the rules because we don't want to get hurt unnecessarily. I mean, life can be hurtful and anything can happen, but if you want to reduce the chances of getting hurt, don't reach out first, don't suggest plans, don't travel to him, don't be in a vulnerable position. But maybe Gail can back me up on this because I saw her nodding her head. When I lived in the city, I was in my 20s. I didn't want to date. I wanted to get married. I wasn't interested in interesting restaurants or drinks or appetizers. I just wanted the right guy. So I always wanted Wednesday for Saturday. I always dated to get married. I just didn't, I just didn't care about dating for dating's sake. Like I, you know, our rule is you go out for one hour on the first date. I literally, if I felt he wasn't my husband, I would just look at my watch and say, oh my God, I forgot something in the oven and, and just leave after 15 minutes. And my doorman would be, what happened? Give the guy a chance. I'd be, no, he's not my husband. I knew right away. And that's how I know guys know right away. So all this, I mean, you know, Instagram, Bumble, this, that, it's all the same. It doesn't matter if you're 24 or 30, it's like all the same. Girls want eventually a husband. You know, all of this is like, the, re the reason we wrote the last book is women were saying, okay, I know not to call men. I know not to sleep with them right away, but what about texting? What about Instagram? It's all the same. You don't text them first. You don't follow them on Instagram. They shouldn't even see your Instagram. You should be private. You should be mysterious because men love a challenge. I agree. That's very, very well said, Sherry. And, and they, uh, well, I think uh, the difference is that the girls in their 20s today are not looking like we did uh, of, to have a ring on our finger. And that's, that's an issue. I mean, a lot of them just are playing the same field that the guys are playing. And I, I'm hoping that by the time they get into their mid to late 20s, that that changes. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, it's a very different generation today. So I'm, I'm not quite sure a lot of these rules might be rules for a later generation uh, that's coming up, not necessarily ones who are your daughter's age uh, that have just gone out of college and are, are really feeling their oats and they don't really know where they're going. We knew by 25, if we weren't married, we were an old maid. Well, it's interesting to talk about like the rush to get married, how, how it has slowed down compared to the older generations who got married younger. Um, we were just talking about this. I don't really know why. Like, do you think that there's just more obstacles, you know, on the way people are, um, it's more the norm now to be set in your career, et cetera. Um, or like people have more sexual partners than they did and they kind of want to extend that like why do we think that the rush to get married has slowed down 
I don't think it's slowed down. I think the girls are not being asked. You know, if you like right. a guy and he's not asking to commit or saying something about the future, I don't know any girl that's going to turn down a guy who's offering to commit, who's offering to marry. Right. They're just not asking. So the girls are saying, oh, I'm into my career. But on, honest to God, I think they would get married if a guy asked. I think, well, I mean, our clients are mostly like Charlotte. They used from Sex and the City. Yeah. They used to be like Samantha. Mm -hmm. They were going to sleep with a guy. They didn't care if he called. And then you know what? They did care if he didn't call the next day. But Rebecca can say what she feels on the subject. But I mean, if, if a guy that I love proposed when I was 25, I would have married him. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, I think the book is more about like dating for commitment, not necessarily like all about marriage. Like that's how I date is like, you know, like I want to date to like be in a relationship, but I'm, I'm at 24, like not looking to get married sometime soon. Um, but I think as far as like why it slowed down with people getting married is I think guys have less incentives to do so because they'll be with girls for maybe like five years and you know they they started dating young and like you know which is understandable but then I think they get comfortable and they just are like well why do we have to change what we're already doing now um but it is important to the girl and I think like kind of having those important conversations like ahead, like, you know, if you're moving in together or whatever is like crucial to making sure it happens. Do you think there's such thing as being too available to a man? Oh, yeah, totally. So then how do you become less available? I guess by doing some of these rules, but what are some like concrete examples that you can give people? Well, if a guy asks you like Friday for Saturday or Saturday mm -hmm. for Saturday, just say I have plans. I mean, we don't even answer on the weekend. So Friday, 5 p.m. to Monday at 10 a.m., he's not even getting a response. If he, because it's the dead zone. I'm in Paris. I'm on a plane. I'm in a yacht. I'm, you know, I'm not available to even answer a text. Mm -hmm. so, I feel like I'm wondering because sometimes if you wait that long of a time, I wonder will a guy think that okay, she's playing a game or she's doing the rules like that they're think or she's thinking too hard about what to respond if she's taking the X amount of hours and not being authentic. Like, do you think that a guy can get fed up with that and decide not to pursue someone? Not if he likes you. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't like you, he'll say she's weird. She's but if he likes you, he'll just think you're busy. So you write wait at least four hours to answer a guy's first text and then a min minimum of 30 minutes afterward. Does that ever, let's say you've been seeing someone for a month or two, like, are you still doing the same thing or can you then start to text them more? Well, you always text less and you never text first. Mm -hmm. So if a guy writes 20 words, you write five, like count them yeah. four hours. You have a podcast, then you're going to the gym, then you're meeting a friend for drinks and apps, mm -hmm. and then you can answer him. Like you right. have a life. If you answer in nanoseconds, he's going to know that you have nothing going on. Yeah. Even though it's so easy just to return a text while you're also doing those things. But it's a strategy. I mean, yeah. nobody wants it to be this way. I didn't want it to be this way. Mm -hmm. I want to think it's to a little bit too many games you're playing. I mean, does it ever, does this strategy backfire? Could a, a, a really nice guys, you know, expect a text back if he's sending you a text? I mean, we're not talking about 20 year olds. We're talking about guys and girls in their late twenties who, you know, are busy and doing things and they're not going to wait four hours for you to answer if you want to have a drink. I think a lot of the texts that we have, like aside from plans are like very trivial. Like it's like, mm -hmm. oh, well, know, that's true. I'm, I'm telling someone, you know, I just made breakfast and they're telling me they're meeting their cousin. I mean, right. a lot of this stuff is like not super urgent. So waiting a few hours because, you know, you had a busy work day and because you just went to the gym and don't feel like you need to answer this text, I think is valid. Um, I don't think you need to make a schedule to it or whatever, but I think the main point is like, you know, don't answer too quickly. What you do with that is like up to you. Just take the spirit of the rules. Like if you feel it's too strict for you, then just do less, but don't do nothing. Mm -hmm. Because girls are, m most of the mistakes they're making, they're, they're either answering too quickly or they're actually initiating texts. If they don't hear from a guy, they'll say, hey, what's up for the weekend? Or you mentioned mini golf on our last date. You know, do you want to do that? Like they're being aggressive and the guy knows they're desperate and then he'll take advantage of them. He'll either sleep with them too soon or just know that he can just treat them badly because they'll accept crumbs. 
Now, Sherry, I want to ask you something because we're talking, uh, you and I are of a different generation. Now, I have a lot of girlfriends now who are now unfortunately widows and they are dating. And do we apply the same rules for, for people over 65 or are we a little more tolerant and we'll answer the test, text a little quicker? You know, it's interesting that you should say that because we have clients of every age, like 20 to 70, and we have widows and women that are divorced and they think, wow, you know, I'm just going to do whatever I want because it's, they think that, you know, they've earned it because right. they're at a certain age. And we've had these women, they literally like travel to a guy, they text him, they sleep with him because they think that's cool. And we say, no, it's the same rules. Cause believe it or not, you're going to get hurt. You're going to you still hurt. think the 80 year old guy is still playing the Definitely. game. <laughs> no, he's, it's not a game. It's really self-esteem, right? If right, I'm right. meeting you on a dating app and this is what they say to themselves, they go, I'm bored in New York. I want to go see Arizona. He lives in Arizona. So I'm going to visit my cousin in Arizona and then loop around and, and see him. He is going to know that you have so much time on your hands and are so interested in him. He's not going to treat you well. Okay. All so right. even if your cousin is in Arizona, he still comes to you. All like right. clients will tell us, a guy asked me, when am I going to be in New Jersey or whatever? And the answer is never. Like I am never going to be in your city. Mm. That's very interesting. They have All to right. come to me. All right. Um, so I wanted to talk about rule number one, be a creature unlike any other. So one, can you just describe like what that means to our listeners? It means that let's say if you dropped out of college or you're unemployed or you have ADD or bipolar, like whatever damaging thing you feel like you're not good enough, you tell yourself no, I'm a creature unlike any other. I'm a woman of God. I'm beautiful. Any man would be lucky to be with me. You pump yourself up. You tell yourself these things. And then you try to actually do things like get manicures and pedicures and take bubble baths and just really internalize the fact that you're worthwhile. So even if you're unemployed, you can still get a guy. Even if you, you know, are not like perfectly thin and look like an Instagram model, you could still get a guy because it's low self-esteem that leads to rule breaking. I found it very interesting that you wrote like be sexy and feminine and men prefer long hair. And even in the most recent book, um, women should dress for men, not for other women. What do you say to people who argue that that might be anti-feminist? Our definition of feminism, and Rebecca could tell you hers, is equal pay for equal work. You can right. have a podcast, Jared Freed can have a podcast, you know, et cetera. But we just have clients that come to us and they're MBAs, they're doctors, they're lawyers, but they look scary. No guy is going to want to go out with them. They look like Diane Keaton, short hair, <laughs> turtlenecks. They, they don't know how to dress. They've lit they literally meet me at the mall and I tell them, no, you wear this and hoop earrings, short skirts. Like we, we're dressing for men because you want to attract a man. Mm -hmm. It's just- like, You're playing the game. Like. You're playing the game. Well, it's, she's saying it's not a game. Well, it is a game. You're playing their <laughs> game. I think it's not a game because it's a, it's a, it's attraction. You need, right. they can't love your insides until they love your outsides. Right. So I why cover yourself up with a turtleneck? You should be dressing different on a date than you are with friends. So, you know, if you're with friends, maybe you're wearing like these cool, like boyfriend ripped jeans and maybe on a date you're wearing, you know, a pretty black scoop neck top with like whatever. Like I, mm -hmm. I think it is, you know, a different look. So I wanted to hear from both of you on like maybe the one or two main things that you've learned from each other. Um, I guess, Sherry, we can start with you of what you've learned from Rebecca about dating in 2021. Um, it's a little more casual. Like, you know, we believe, I was talking to my husband about this, you know, our rule is a guy has four chances, four messages, four texts to ask you out. Mm -hmm. And Rebecca told me, no, the guy can take up to a week of texting to ask you out. My husband was like, if I saw a pretty picture on an app, I'm asking her out now. Mm -hmm. I don't need to chat. I don't need to know what her favorite movie is, you know, or color. So I'm like, I just wanted to get going. I want to get going. I have no time to waste. Even if I'm not, even if I was, when I was 24, I still didn't feel like, I just wanted to know on the first date, are you going to marry me? I didn't want to waste one minute on a guy that wasn't into me. You know what I'm saying? So how long are you married? Uh, 27 years. All right. I'm going to be married 58. So I'm W. 
And I happen to agree 100%. So why did you keep saying this is a game? Because I think the way they do it now is a game. I think the texting is a game. I think the, uh, you know, it, you'll know within two or three dates if you really like somebody. And then there should be really not this uh, nonsense with I'll wait four hours, I'll wait. Two, but the you know. Gail, the problem is men are not committing. No, well, that's like, but that's for other reasons. I think they're also getting sex fast, so they don't need well, to that, So th that's the very big difference. Who's to blame for that? The women, the, girl, are, the women are giving absolutely. it away. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, There's no question seeing, about that. What we're seeing with texting and everything is that it's like going on a job interview a hundred times and they're not offering you the job. It's like it's endless mm -hmm. texting, endless dates, endless and no commitment. So we're saying like, cut it off. Like you can't just keep going. Well, I, oh, I definitely agree with that. After after a few months of dating at, at a certain age, I think you either are into the person for a more serious next step or you're not. And then you just stop it. But I think they have to, in this world today where everything moves so quickly, I think they have to take time and see if they enjoy each other and on the same level in many different ways. Because unfortunately, what happened in uh, the 60s, 70s and 80s, we had a lot of divorces because everybody was really getting married too quickly and too young. So I think you do need to spend a little time seeing if you have the same common interests and uh, the same goals, actually, more than even common interests, the same goals in life. How did you meet your husband, Gail? Uh, we were fixed up and by family. And, and he, um, he liked you more than you liked him in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. So that's but what I I'm saying in that. But I believe, I believe in that. I believe in that. Like the guy yeah. should like you a drop more yeah. than yeah. you like him. I think all, all your life, actually, it works like right. that. Uh, women are caretakers, but the men have to be, you are absolutely right, have to be the pursuers. What would you say to someone who says like, that's settling? Like you should be with who you think is like, the best, most like amazing. I don't know if it's as settling. I, I think what's happened with young women and Rebecca can talk about this perhaps more than I, I certainly more than I can is that there's a fantasy out there and the fantasy really is not reality. I mean, I, in, when I was 20, I would have liked to have married uh, Gary Cooper or Gregory Peck, <laughs> but they, they weren't calling me up on the phone. Right. So I had to find a young, a man who was in my a realm of uh, lifestyle and background and education that I felt I could make a life with, have children with, have fun with, travel with. Uh, was it the greatest love fair that ever happened? I'm sure not. It really, no. But we liked each other and we made a very wonderful life together. So I think what ha it's not settling, it's creating reality. I mean, if you could have the most fabulous love affair and will not make good marriage. I, I, the big judgments have to be whether you really think you can live together and make a life together. I mean, what do you think, Sherry? Well, I don't think we're settling because I, I don't, Kim, I don't want to give you the impression that because the guy likes you more, that means you don't like him. When I met my husband, I had a chemistry with him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And when I came home, I ran home and I called Ellen and I said, you know, I think this could be the one or whatever. My heart was going pitter patter. The thing is, I didn't tell him. I told everybody but him that I liked him. <laughs> so he had no idea. He actually didn't think I liked him, which is the rules, because if he thought I liked him, like all his ex-girlfriends, he would have disappeared because he was bored by women that liked him too much. Mm -hmm. So I was the one girl that didn't talk so much. He had to carry the conversation. I was the one girl that never suggested getting together. I was the one girl that never called. His mother at my shower said to Ellen, I don't understand why she never called him. And he, she said, well, that's why he married her. Like right. he married the one girl that didn't call him. So he played football. He played soccer. He played guys like the chase. You know, it's not like two girlfriends. I often find when I'm on a date, even if it's like the third or fourth or fifth date or something, someone will be like, or sometimes even before that, they'll be like, you know, I am really enjoying spending time with you. Like, I really like you. Um, not being like I'm in love and want to get married, but like just like a check in pulse check. I want to continue dating you kind of conversation. What would you what would a rules girl respond to that? Will they say like, thank you. That's nice. Or I like you, too. Like, what what do you say in that situation if you don't want to show all your cards? Well, never say, like, never match it 100%. Like, never mm -hmm. say, I like you too. Just say, that's nice, sure. I mean, let the, give them a green light that you're okay with going forward, but never mm -hmm. say, exactly. like when my husband said, I love you, I said, 
thank you. And then the second <laughs> time he said it, I said, that's sweet. And then the third time I said it, because uh-huh. if you give it like ev- evenly so quickly, there's like no challenge. They have to like hunger for you to say it. Interesting. Um, so you also have a section in your book, not your mother's rules, talking about how moms can talk to their daughters about relationships. Can you share with our listeners the best approach to having these kind of conversations? Rebecca could answer this one. Uh-huh. I mean, I feel like my mom and I have always had just a very like honest, blunt, like um, approach to it. So it, it's ultimately however much like the daughter, I guess, wants to share. I personally don't believe you can tell people, you know, you should do the rules, even your own daughter. I think wait for them to get hurt or wait for them to come to you and say, wow, I like your marriage. Your husband seems really devoted or whatever. It's not the rules to preach the rules. We don't, you know, if you don't want it, then, then don't do it. Mm -hmm. But if you are, you know, a a kind of woman who gets easily hurt or is overly nice, like Kim, I listened to the podcast you did with Lindsay Metzler Mm -hmm. and you said that you should send a thank you text after a date. And Gail said, he just bought you dinner. He didn't like buy you a mansion, you know, or whatever she said, build a world for you or something. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of like, we rationalize and say, oh, I'm just being nice. I'm being polite by sending him a text. But the truth is we're trying to engage. We're trying to get his attention. We're trying to get a date out of him. So we really like the best thing you could do with guys is nothing. Don't call, Mm -hmm. don't text, don't suggest any, like absolutely nothing and see what you get. And that's the truth. Because I love by that. doing stuff, you create like a scenario that's not real. Like women tend to keep a relationship going that was dead a long time ago by, oh, you know, I'd love to make you dinner or, you know, I have two tickets to a tennis match or whatever. We don't, we don't do any of that. I think Lindsay changed my opinions on thank you text. I don't do it anymore. Because it's so true. Like you'll see if they text you and say like, I love now when people, a guy will text after and be like, thank you for coming to dinner with me. And I'm like, yeah, I am the prize. I was wondering if you are thinking about in the future, writing another book, you know, since the last one, it includes Facebook and a texting a little bit and emailing, but now we've touched on it a little bit with Instagram and dating apps. Um, Just technology has changed and now COVID too. Like has changed um, the history or the way that dating is today. Are you thinking about writing another book, including all of these things? We are actually writing another book, but it's not about COVID. It's because COVID I feel has come and gone and dating is like, they can still meet you at a park. Like they can make it. It's, It's rules for everyone. Like most of our clients at this point have gotten married and they're like, thank you. I did the rules. I got my husband but I don't know how to deal with my mother-in-law. Are there rules for my mother-in-law? Are there rules for my sister who's annoying, my coworker who's sabotaging my career? Like rules for everyone else. And you'd be surprised how many issues come up with all the other people. Sherry, where can people um, follow you and buy any of your books? We have a website, therulesbook.com. Okay, great. But only if you want it, only if you want it. Yeah. Okay, we really enjoyed talking to Sherry. Now let's move on to our 50s movie of the week. We were trying to think of something that has to do with rules. So this week we picked Teacher's Pet, which was 1958. With Doris Day, as usual. And Clark Gable. So basically in the movie, Doris Day sets up or her character sets up a bunch of rules in her romance with Clark Gable's character. So you guys should definitely watch. That was another great episode of Excuse My Grandma. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Excuse My Grandma. Check out our website, excusemygrandma.com. Okay, see you next time.